Hey guys, we're going to be talking about brain health again. This is our third video in this series, but today we're going to be talking about testing of brain health mm -hmm. because there's a lot of, uh, the brain's kind of an unusual organ. There's not How just a... How do you a, test it? Right. Right. So there's Other multiple ways and the functional medicine way. Where are my keys? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, and so I'm Dr. Philip Boob. This I'm is... I'm Aubrey Steen. And that's actually a great point. Uh, that's a great place to start is um, a loved one <laughs> may have told you that you need to worry about your brain. Yeah. And, and especially if you're a male, you're like, no, I'm fine. So there's actually tests that can help you determine um, whether or not mm -hmm. you have brain dysfunction or not. So whether and you want to so, prove someone wrong and say that you do have good brain health or right. if you really want to see what's going on in there. Right. And so if you, everybody kind of forgets their keys every now and then yeah. or walks into the pantry, forgot why they were there or whatnot. Um, and it ends up grabbing what they shouldn't grab while they're in the pantry. Put the sock in the fridge, you know. <laughs> right. So at some point, though, it becomes abnormal. Right. And so how do you determine when that's abnormal, um, even though the, your spouse is complaining mm -hmm. about your memory? Is it really abnormal, or did you just not care about that task right. that they told you about? Is it happening on a consistent basis? And is it happening with more things often than not? Are you driving and constantly missing your exit? Are you constantly forgetting to call someone back? Are you constantly forgetting to turn the oven off or lock the door? Not just those neurotic tendencies of like, did I do this? Yes. Actually forgetting these things over and over and over again. Or are you super anxious? Do you have depression, right. mental illness, OCD, neurotic tendencies that are actually interfering with your daily life? Mm -hmm. So the first steps towards this diagnosing brain um, dysfunction is just that section is called uh, subjective cognitive impairment, oh. which means someone told you you have cognitive impairment. You might think you have cognitive impairment. Right. They probably don't use that word, but they said, hey, you're forgetting a lot of stuff, right? So, so the doctor will say <laughs> subjective cognitive impairment. So th what we want to help you with is finding out if it's actually clinical or not. And one of the ways we like to do it is something called a CNS Vital Signs. It's, it's a, a software that someone has created online and so we send a link to a patient and mm -hmm. they take their own test at home um, with Super a keyboard easy. and mouse. Yes. At, well, it's not easy. I mean, it I is mean, easy to, sorry, to, to get the test set yeah. up, but it is a difficult, it is a brain challenge. It is, it hurts a little bit. It does hurt a little bit. Yeah. And it's a solid 30 minutes of testing. Now, they've come out with all kinds of array of testing that you can do on it. And so the, the basic one for cognitive decline or cognitive impairment is, is simply the, the that basic panel, the CNS vital signs. Now, you may be thinking, well, I'm not 80 years old, I don't need to worry about dementia or whatnot, but you can see cognitive impairment in all kinds of different types, okay? So, Aubrey kind of mentioned some of those types already. If you're so OCD that you're actually distracted, so this test is actually pretty thorough as far as an analyzing totally different aspects of your brain. Mm -hmm. As far as visual spatial, maybe you couldn't park the car for some reason and you're having some visual spatial issues, but your memory is perfectly fine or your concentration is perfectly fine. So this test goes through each piece by piece and can analyze each one. And then by the end of it, it gives you a score. And that score is based on the average. So I always like to warn people that there's two reasons to do this test. One is to see if you actually are dysfunctional. I mean, if, you're, if all your results are in the red zone, then that's right. a concern. But say you're a highly intellectual individual, you're able to accomplish a lot, you're a CEO, owner, company, whatever it may be, if your numbers are, are at 95, they're, they're all based on 100, 100 being normal or average. So if all of your scores are 95, yet you feel like you're a high functioning individual, then that may be um, diagnostic for you that you're underperforming. A reason, and so the second reason to do this test is whatever baseline levels you get, then you can retest in three, six months. We just did a video on butyrate. Yeah. So say you've been doing some fasting, you've been eating more vegetables, you've been eating more fats and trying to do ketogenic, trying to generate your own butyrate. Maybe you're taking the butyrate supplement, whatever it may be. And now you want to test again to see if that, that, fun that has actually done anything because you might still be forgetting your keys. You might mm -hmm. still have put the sock in the oven. Uh, that's dangerous. But um, anyway, <laughs> so you can retest and actually put some hard data to it. And the test is, is cheap. It's really not that expensive. Yeah. I actually think it's like 50 bucks. So yeah. that's, that's not bad in the brain health world. Um, so if you have those issues, um, that are, that, that's just telling you how your brain is functioning. Right. It's not telling you the why. Right. We're just quantifying your brain function. Right. So one of the next things we want to tell you about is what testing you can do to find out some of the why your brain might be dysfunctional. Yeah. And more so of the kind of like 
not like, oh, there's toxins on board, but, but similarly, it's kind of like the bridge between the root cause of it all and the symptoms itself. Mm -hmm. So blood tests are one of the mm -hmm. ways that you can do it. Mm -hmm. One that I really like is from Cyrex Laboratories. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna read a couple markers off my phone, but one of my favorite ones is the blood-brain barrier permeability. A, do you have the array number? Don't they list it by oh, array I number? Oh, I do. I'm not sure. So if you look I'll up Cyrex, have they have it, multiple yeah. different panels, and so they usually call them by it's array. It's array 20. Array 20 and yeah, that is has their the, blood-brain barrier yeah, test. The IgA and IgM, and we use this on multiple patients, which is kind of nice. Um, and you can kind of see, is how is my blood-brain barrier? Because we say that a lot, especially especially with intestinal permeability, but you do have different toxins and different or, like particles that cross the blood-brain barrier, which immediately impedes your brain mm -hmm. in the nicest way so possible. So this test looks for antibodies against the blood-brain barrier yes. is one of the things it looks at. And the idea there is that your BBB, your blood-brain barrier, is just that. It is a barrier to keep things out of the right. brain that may be circulating in the bloodstream. Say, uh, well, I was going to use alcohol, but that, that crossed the blood-brain barrier. But say mold toxins, right. you don't want it to cross the blood-brain barrier. Food but if, you're in, if your immune system is attacking the blood-brain barrier, then it makes it leaky, it right. makes it porous, there's holes in it, so things that aren't supposed to cross into the brain can. This is one of the ideas behind why two people can be exposed to something. One is perfectly fine, one is not, because right. their, their environment is different. So one person has a leakier blood-brain mm -hmm. barrier. So you can see this, and there are things that trigger the blood-brain barrier autoimmunity, like gluten. Right, and the, the cool thing about it is I'll tell you like a yellow-green, or a green, yellow, or red. Kind of mm -hmm. like, do you have a lot of antibodies? Do you have minimal? Should you be concerned? And I think we, we've had even very sick patients who've had stayed in the green, which is mm -hmm. kind of nice. Um, the next one is Array 7X, and that's neurological autoimmunity. So do you have autoimmunity? Is your body attacking the brain itself? And that has quite a few things, like the myelin basic protein antibodies too, mm -hmm. like myelin sheath in the brain. Myelin is the thing that coats the nerves to protect them yes. because the nerve is stretched over really long spaces. Uh, every cell is microscopic in length, but you think there's two cells that go from the brain all the way to your foot two cells, mm -hmm. okay? That nerve is stretched really, really long. There's one that goes from the brain to the spinal cord and another one that goes from the spinal cord to the foot. That's two cells that are stretched feet, yeah. okay? So those nerves, they obviously can't survive. So the myelin sheath coats them kind of like insulation on an electrical wire. Mm -hmm. And there's nerve cells that feed that myelin sheath in order to support that nerve. So if your immune system is destroying the insulation, the nerve can't fire. So I use the example of, of brain to foot, but say that's brain to brain, say that's focus, say yeah. that's vision, say that's hearing, whatever it may be, you can damage your, your ability to think. Yeah. Um, next one is aciolo, asaleo ganglioside. That's, an, that's interesting. Yeah. So ganglio, the ganglial cells are, are the ones that, that protect the, the brain. Right. Um, that must just be some sort of protein made by yeah. a, a brain cell that's that's specific to a brain cell. Yeah, a couple other ones, I guess. Synapsin is really, so there's cerebellar, which obviously cerebellum, cerebellum. is attacking the cerebellum. Alpha and beta tubulin. Um, and then the synapsin, those synapses of those nerve cells, how they communicate mm -hmm. towards each other as well. Mm -hmm. So it has about like six to seven different markers on here. Um, that kind of tell you where are you? Are you within range? Are you equivocal? Are you out of range? Or do you have a big issue or not? And this is something any doctor can order. They right. can call and Cyrex, set up an account. Their tests aren't cheap, unfortunately. No. But um, you, you order the test. It's a simple blood test. Doesn't require a whole lot of effort. Right. If somebody can draw blood, they, they can send it in. Basically. But it's kind of good when you, when you, if you have that patient or if you are that patient who is super nervous, like if you do have autoimmunity and you are having brain fog and these other issues and you're like, how much is my brain being attacked? Because mm -hmm. there's a difference of neurological autoimmunity versus symptoms of having like brain fog from mycotoxins. There, there's, I mean, obviously that can eventually lead to neurological autoimmunity, but if you are very anxious and you really do just kind of want to quantify where's my health at, testing is always a really good way to go. Mm -hmm. There's other labs that do similar things. Yeah. So we've used the Cunningham panel in the yeah. past. Uh, we use Fiber in America. They call their test the Neural Zoomer. And so it's just working with your provider um, as far as which lab uh, they, they choose to use. I'd say Cyrex was probably one of the pioneers there. Yeah. Um, but all the labs do great work. And so just find out what, wherever your price point is. Yeah. But then you have to get down to the root of treating that, right? So if you have mm -hmm. brain autoimmunity, then you actually have to reverse the autoimmune condition. And I, and I we believe and we have seen that almost every autoimmune condition, autoimmune patient that has come to us, we have been able to reverse their disease, reduce their, their symptom burden. Yeah. And so that's not a task that you do and then you go, oh my God, that's it. I I'm, I'm might as done. well go dig my grave no. now, right? 
You're doing that marker to find out that you have a problem. You're going to take your health seriously. You're going to start working with a functional medicine provider. Or you're going to take our courses, start changing your health on your own without having to pay yeah. the expense of a functional medicine provider. Um, and you're going to take over your health and you can reverse this on your own by doing that. Right. So there's all kinds of other tests you can do for brain health. Those are the ones that are pretty specific to the brain, unless there's anything else you can think of that are specific blood tests for that. No, I mean, one of the ways, I do like Cyrex, like if you see those numbers, then try to do their intestinal permeability test and see where are you? Do you have intracellular or paracellular kind of um, intestinal permeability, kind of like is it blown through the cell, is it through the cell, and endotoxemia, where you can see there's toxins leaking through the gut, and usually that is related to blood-brain barrier dysfunction. Mm -hmm. So other than that, not really. Do not rely on CAT scans and MRIs to yes. assess brain function. All that looks at is the structure, yeah. right? So you can, if you look at a house, it could be beautiful on the outside, it could be totally rotten, hoarded on the inside, right? So just because you have an MRI of the brain and you don't see anything, don't get, uh, don't think that, oh, well, they'll just never find it. That's right. just looking at the structure. You have no idea what's going on in the biochemistry. You have no idea what's going on, the, on at the cellular level. Right. Um, there's all kinds of other root causes that go with brain health. Those are the specific brain mm -hmm. tests. Um, I guess functional MRI is another thing that's getting more popular. <laughs> it's not really my favorite. Um, I think the functional MRI uses uh, some sort of radioactive dye and it doesn't really change a whole lot. When you can test things without radiation, that's always my preference, right. but the function MRI is really neat to see. Yeah. Um, I think it will get more popular over time. It's just hard to find. Yeah. So don't forget that there are still other causes of mm -hmm. brain health. Um, we always go back to right. the five finger metaphor. So to go over that, I'm, I've done it in other videos, but gut is number one, biological toxins, which are found in the gut and sinuses from yeast and bacteria. Number three is mold, which we talked about in a previous video mm -hmm. on brain health. Number four is environmental chemicals, and number five is heavy metals. We see a lot of heavy metals linked to brain dysfunction. And yeah. yes, that's one of those things that unfortunately, until you do the test, you have no idea if you're heavy metal overloaded or not. The majority, and I mean the majority, I'd probably say 99% of our patients that come back with excessive heavy metal levels have no idea where they got them and had no idea that they were that yeah. high until we did the test. So heavy metals is one of those things that I constantly preach on. You've got to find a heavy metal provider that's competent and can do it safely to find it if you have a problem. And once mm -hmm. you know that you don't, then you can move on to the others. But heavy metals and especially uh, lead and mercury love mm -hmm. to affect the brain. Moldy people. Mold brain. Super brain, yeah. Um, one thing I do wanna say is please don't waste your money on these tests if you're not gonna change your diet first. <laughs> I, and I really right. mean that like, Take out the most inflammatory foods, take out gluten and dairy and sugar, and then see if it improves, and then maybe get it tested as well. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's like, yeah, you can test, but if you're still eating a ton of really bad food that's no, known to cause brain fog and confusion and dizziness and exhaustion and things, just do yourself a favor and limit those just for a little bit and then get tested. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more science coming out in these tests, so these are just some of the earliest markers that right. are being discovered right now. I wouldn't doubt fast forward in two or three years that that panel is now 20 markers yeah. long. We've just got a long ways to go in, in autoimmunity and brain. Yeah. So that'll wrap up this video. Be sure to like our channel, subscribe, uh, hit the little bell to get notifications when we make another video. Okay. And um, until then, get working on that brain health. Okay. Bye guys. I'll see you later.